Before we jump in, I want to talk for a moment about filtering and sorting. The thing I see a lot of players do is jump into their mods and immediately sort by speed. While that's still a tool I commonly use, the better option for working with new mods is the default sorting, rarity. While it does indeed sort your mods by rarity, what it also does is sort mods by level. If we pair this sorting technique with the filter by unequipped button and add in the set type that we just farmed, we can immediately cut through all the clutter and see the mods we just farmed. If you have a lot of unequipped mods, then you have the additional options of filtering by rarity or clicking each mod slot to filter by mod type or combining both. Don't bother using the actual slot filters in most scenarios, but if you have a lot of arrows cluttering things up, it can be useful to activate every slot except the arrow. If you build this habit of taking a moment to filter what you're looking for the moment you jump in, you're saving yourself a ton of time from having to scroll around and the process feels a lot easier. Once you have the muscle memory built, it's super fast and easy to do. With that out of the way, and now that we've covered what we're going to keep, it's finally time to roll up our sleeves and dive into those mods that we farmed. The first thing you need to know is that mods work in tiers of 3, up to 12. Each tier reveals a stat that you can't see yet until all four are visible, and then upgrades one stat. Each rarity comes with one extra stat revealed, effectively giving you an extra upgrade instead. Green comes with one extra stat visible, giving you one extra upgrade. For blue, you reveal every stat at level 6 and get two upgrade attempts. For purple, you reveal at level 3 and get three upgrade attempts. Gold mods start with every stat revealed and give you four upgrades. Each tier is also progressively more expensive, but it's not realistically sustainable to level every single mod up to 12 since we're working with so many mods. Instead, what we do here is partially upgrade each mod to get an initial appraisal and decide if the mod is worth our time and resources. If the mod shows enough that we know it's worth keeping, then we lock it. Think of the lock button as the opposite of a mark is junk feature. Locked mods aren't visible in the sell screen, so we can use the feature to make selling that much easier. Because we stop upgrading mods early if we know we're selling them, it also makes selling easier because it reverse sorts by mod level automatically as well. Those mods we decided not to keep will show up first. For the upgrading technique, there's a slight variation based on whether the mods are speed set or not. We treat each mod rarity differently based on their rarity, but the pattern is based on the method we use for gray mods, so let's start there. I treat speed sets differently because they're only hunting for a possible speed reveal, so I reveal three stats right off the bat and upgrade them to level 9. You technically save some credits if you level them to 6 first, see speed, and stop there, but it's a small amount of credits saved and I'd rather save some time and effort instead. If it's a mod slot that I know that I'm desperate for, say I'm low on speed triangles, then it's fine to upgrade it to 12 before moving on. If you have a huge amount of credits saved up and you don't expect to need to use them soon, you can go ahead and try leveling all speed mods to 12, but understand that you're putting a heavy strain on your credit income and you'll need to switch back as your supply starts to lower. For non-speed sets, level them to 6 and check what stats are initially revealed. This is where that section about stat pairings in the last video comes into play. Depending on the percent chance of success we want our mods to have, the number of matches we see in these first two reveals immediately tells us whether we should sell the mod or keep going. The number of matches you've decided to aim for will dictate how many mismatches you can see before moving on. You need to decide the minimum amount of matches you want to set as your threshold. Remember, each mismatching secondary is a possible negative slicing outcome. But if you want good short-term growth, it's not realistic to only target 4 matches. 3 matches feels like a sweet spot to me. It's just common enough to be consistent, but also has a high enough chance of good slicing performance to be worth the investment. For each rarity above gray, we get a free upgrade instead of a stat reveal, so we can get a full idea of the mods matching secondaries earlier, and cheaper. Green still ends up following the same pattern as gray, since we avoided upgrading to 12 in both scenarios, but you get to check the first stat upgrade to see if it gets a good slice. For blue and beyond, I lowered the initial leveling target by 3 per rarity. For purples and golds, if you see a bad upgrade early, 
the credit cost is low enough that it can still be worth it to keep upgrading them to see if they can redeem themselves. If you see two bad rolls, it's probably time to move on. We'll cover this more directly in the selling video, but as you're getting reveals on stats you want, it's worth starting to think about quality control. The easy example I'd give here is speed. Some of your reveals will be 5 speed, and some will be 3. There's a reasonable argument to make that you shouldn't give resources to a mod that's off to a bad start. And to be honest, I don't have a great counter argument for it. The maximum potential for a 3 speed mod is 6 to 9, and 6 or 7 is a pretty rough result to land on. At the same time, I don't necessarily think that 3 speed mods are inherently evil, so I think a great mentality to approach with is this. If you're working through enough volume to the point that you've got plenty of 4 or 5 speed mods that need slicing, go ahead and sell the 3s. If you can't afford triple daily mod energy refreshes, or your mod depth is low, I don't think it's the worst thing you could do to give the 3 speed options a shot. It's possible for a 3 speed to rebound up to a 9, but understand that the odds aren't great. A lot of these choices are flexible, and you'll have to make them yourself, but as a rule of thumb, it's better to stick with the high speed reveals. So that's it for this video. The next video is going to cover learning to sell in bulk, which I think might end up being the most important video for a lot of people. It's easier to get mods than it is to get rid of them, and mod selling paralysis is a pretty real thing to overcome. I'll see you there.